Taiwan has changed so much in the past, well, not just even 70 years, the past 20 years, it changed a lot. When I first came, we had to sleep under mosquito nets, and there was lots of uh, disease and sickness around. In fact, when you go to a restaurant to eat, you would be served food by a leper. And, you know, it was just different. And also, it was more of a agricultural society and then it changed into industrial, and then a technological society. Uh, I had, of course had to learn Chinese. I learned some Chinese before I came, but then I had to learn Gong Dai Wan Hui, to speak a little Taiwanese, and then I said, Yuan Zhu Min Da Wang, Gang Ina Saba Mu. So whenever you live with people in a different area, it's always good to learn their language because then you can really communicate with them. And so I tried to learn languages of where I was living. And I lived on the East Coast, and so I had to learn some tribal languages too. So if you really want to learn another language, you have to really immerse yourself a little bit in the culture, and you have to listen into it, and also you have to have motivation. If you don't care, you're not gonna learn. So motivation is important. And it's very necessary today for everybody to learn English. It used to be French was the language of the world, and now it's English. And so you have to be motivated to do that. But you also have to listen, and, per and you have to repeat what you hear and practice it. That's very important. In every culture, there are things that are quite different, no matter where you go, if it's Europe or Asia, and you're not used to them. And sometimes those things bother you, and you say, why do they do this, and why do they do that? But I think it's very important for all of us to learn to be tolerant of other cultures and to learn patience and try to find out why people do that. And if we have some good reason for them to change, show them a good example of it. Don't just tell them all the time. You know, Taiwan is in a sense a small country in Asia, but small doesn't mean not good because diamonds are small and they shine. And I think Taiwan shines all throughout Asia because of the people, you know, there are a lot of beautiful places in the world, lots of lovely places, but if the people aren't friendly, nobody likes it. And I think in Taiwan, the best thing is about it is the people, because they're willing to learn, they're willing to change. You know, many countries in Asia, many, they had a chance to change after World War II, but they didn't, and they still have buffaloes on the street. But in Taiwan, the people were willing to get the new ideas and culture, and so they wanted to learn more. And I think this willingness to learn, this willingness to change, and the love of people and being friendly is very important. It's the people that make Taiwan great. You know, there's so many things that we should do when we go to a new country. And one of them is to share the things that we have that they don't have. And at Taiwan, Taiwan's going through many changes and they had to learn English in order to really get into that. They had people from the American uh, companies come out to teach, but they didn't speak Chinese. And so people had to start to learn English to negotiate and also to let people know what Taiwan was like. They had to learn English. Now we had musical groups, we had singing groups, and we had things that we did for activities, but that were not helping the people get into the in modern culture. So we started this program so people could understand what was going on in English. Sometimes when reporters would come to talk to the people in the government, they would say, is Taiwan a free country? And the people, they'd say no. They meant yes, but they didn't know to say yes or no. So I said, you have to learn English so you can answer. So we tried to help the government and help the people in school, the kids learn English so they could compete in the modern world and be part of the modern world. And so I think that's one of the main reasons we started Studio Classroom.
One thing is, whenever you do anything, you're going to have problems and difficult situations. But I think it's your mindset. You have to say, we have to do this, and then you have to have courage. And in Chinese, we say, yung gan, buyao fang qi. You have to continue on, no matter what your challenges are. Sometimes it's finances, because when we started Studio Classroom, it was just a piece of paper, a lesson sheet. And some of it was from the China Post, because it was, they wanted, they couldn't read it. And so we would take the articles and teach them. And then we had on the radio, and everybody would get up at 6.30 in the morning and listen. Then we started not only radio, but television, and, and all kinds of technology, CD-ROMs, and today we're going on into the media, just like the China Post. We're, we're trying to think of things that help people learn business English, video on tube. And so we felt that in order to help people, we had to teach them some English. That was a need for it. But the problem was sometimes finances and different things. But you just say, no matter what. Sometimes we'd say, well, this must be our last meal. We don't have enough money for tomorrow. But tomorrow we'd always have enough money somehow. So we made it through and we're still going today. Sometimes when you face difficulties, it's hard to know how to act. In the first place, we like to react and we don't like something. But the, the older you get, the more you learn that you have to be patient and tolerant and don't speak too soon. And another thing I learned is that you have to get all the facts. Now, when people get angry, it's because they don't know all the facts. They hear one side. But you have to get all the facts and then you start to look at it and it keeps you from becoming angry because you realize there's two sides to everything. And so I think that's a good lesson for all of us to learn is to, to, to control our first impulses and then think about something before we act. And 100 years from now, of course, we won't be here, but <laughs> actually, you know, things change, and I've taught the people on our staff, from, uh, from those that learn from us and go down, to go move with the changes. Don't be afraid of change. Learn how to handle change and go into it. So when people started to get uh, into uh, modern media, we started in the 1990s, we started CD-ROMs, and we started all these things, and now we're on the, all the YouTubes and all these things, and I think now, I can't tell you because in 10 years from now, it will be different. Maybe it'll be robots teaching, I don't know. But whatever it is, we have to go with the change and develop as the society develops. And we also have to meet the needs of the society and what they are in that day. So there's no way we can tell that, but we can be open-minded, we can be willing to change and ready to change, very thoughtfully going into the new things that are developing. Well, you know, people always say, where is your home? Because where did you come from? It's interesting. But we have this saying in English is, the home is where the heart is. And my heart is here, so this is my home. And so I don't say why I'm going home, because home is. And of course, if you happen to be a Christian, you know your home is in heaven. And you know you're gonna go there someday. And then we're all gonna be there, everybody from every society. That'll be the final home. But right now, this is my home, this is where my heart is. <laughs>